Most people in low and middle income countries now live in teeming cities and governments have had notable success in improving the public health through community services such as vaccination and malnutrition prevention. At the other end of the scale, governments increasingly invest in hospitals. Many have modern facilities and well-trained staff. But where do people turn when they develop symptoms and need to see a clinician? What are the primary care services like in these low and middle income country cities? What is the level of access, the cost, and most importantly, the quality of those services? And what is the demand on the services that patients select? In this global health series on urban primary health care services, we sought to answer these questions and to use economic theory to examine what can be done to improve services for people in low middle income country settings. There is a dense array of diverse primary care provider clinics, many being privately or independently run. Most patients can reach a provider within a 15 minute walk. And in what may come as a surprise to many, majority of clinics are not busy and they have underutilized capacity. In most clinics, the major out-of-pocket costs are in laboratory fees and medications, not consultation fees. Despite an abundance of choices, the quality of clinical care is poor in terms of the correct diagnosis and providing appropriate treatment. The dense, fragmented, and diverse array of options for care for city dwellers creates challenges of choice similar to those faced by any group seeking services in a market. People tend to select the facility that they think will balance the quality of care they receive with the price they will pay. People are willing and they are able to bear more costs, both in travel time and out-of-pocket expenses to reach the provider of their choice. However, any market for healthcare services is famously marked by uncertainties in quality and by asymmetry of information available to care seekers. Market failures occur in large part because the vast majority of facilities offer services of low technical quality. In other words, there are too many bad actors or bad eggs. But in the same markets, there are providers of very high quality, the good eggs. The conundrum is what makes them this way. And how can public health policymakers and practitioners identify and replicate the good eggs? Unsurprisingly, there are myriad policies and possible interventions to improve primary care services in cities, in low and middle income countries. For instance, training providers, um, changing the way clinics are managed, implementing new pricing schemes and replacing doctors with nurses for selected, selected tasks, and then of course introducing new technologies. We identified some specific management policies that can be recommended, such as education and management training and uh, providing healthcare providers with handheld notes. But we also cautioned that in the urban environment, the literature often finds quality improvements that are small and unlikely to function at scale across the diverse market. Indeed, we also identified a range of proposed policies that are harmful, such as user fees, and then also policies that sometimes work and sometimes do not work, like pay for performance or um, savings groups for medicine purchase. New approaches to management implementation and integration are emerging, but it has so far been a challenge to develop a replicable, scalable quality improvement intervention across a market that has such a wide range of independent providers. The news is not all bad, however. In the urban environment, there are new, high leverage, market shaping tools that policymakers can use to improve quality with low budgetary costs. These approaches involve managing the market for providers so that it becomes more like a garden than a jungle, weeding out the low quality providers and encouraging the expansion of high quality ones. For example, Subjecting competing facilities to public information interventions, like the restaurant letter grades you see in many major cities, has been shown to quickly improve quality across the provider population with minimal direct investment from regulators. 
We caution that the strategies of weeding out should not be taken too far, however. In many places, eliminating a wide range of low-quality providers would devastate population access to any care. Instead, we focus on other tools that leverage competition to crowd in high-quality investments. These include strategic regulation, as well as more direct approaches like strategic investment in public services. Public investment can take many forms, but the literature supports primary care clinics that ask as a hub for community health workers who proactively provide preventive and supportive services. Investments that strengthen the quality of the market and train knowledgeable workers often have positive knock-on effects in competing independent clinics. When we started our work, following an award from the UK's National Institute for Health and Care Research, we thought we were fine that clinics were few and far between in low and middle income country cities and that patients would have little choice in where to go. What we instead found was a dense network of accessible clinics, most of which offered low quality clinical services. But we also found that people have agency, trading both cost and convenience for quality. In short, a market in healthcare. This means that as you've heard from my colleagues, much can be achieved using established tools to shape the market to fit user needs. Thank you.